British archaeologists believe they have made one of the most significant finds of the last 50 years in a river valley in Croatia. There they have uncovered a remarkable collection of metal and stone objects covering thousands of years. According to a group of archaeologists from Birmingham University, the site is exceptionally preserved, giving them a major opportunity to map the early history of everyday life within the region. Their work, captured here on amateur video, is giving them an unusual insight into how people grew crops centuries ago, how they tended their animals and how they protected their tribes. The valley has had nearly 8,000 years of settlement, virtually all of which has been preserved. The valley and the river also show signs of a series of preserved wooden dwellings and a variety of objects including swords, helmets, axes and other stone and metal objects. Local archaeologists have been aware of the materials within the area, but the Birmingham team are able to bring their experience to this investigation and demonstrate the wider context of the finds. Now onto a story of a moose run amok. A moose on the loose in a Salt Lake City neighborhood managed to evade capture until it took one wrong step and became trapped. A few pieces of moose fur on this window is all that remains from this bizarre incident. The owner of the house, Alan, was sitting at his window well sending out emails when the 800 pound moose fell into his window well and got stuck. The moose had been spotted earlier by officers from the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. They shot the 18-month-old female with a tranquilizer dart, but nothing seemed to slow her down until she became trapped in Alan's window well. That was the beginning of a long afternoon for the moose and for authorities who called it one of the most complicated moose rescues they had ever seen. With the help of a digger truck, rescuers fitted the moose with a harness and a few hours later the moose was free. The rescue was handled very carefully. They didn't want to injure the animal any more than it may already have been. With a shot to reverse the tranquilizer, the moose was soon back on its feet and taken back to the wild. Our next story takes us to Brazil, where scientists have made a discovery that leads them to believe that dinosaurs once roamed Brazil's Amazon. The scientists from the Rio de Janeiro Federal University have recently found dinosaur fossils in Brazil, providing the first proof that the ancient creatures once roamed the region. They found the 110 million year old remains of a new genus and species of dinosaur. The find confounds the view of many scientists who thought paleontology research in the Amazon rainforest as fruitless because of the high humidity, which they believe would have caused relatively rapid decay of fossils. Amazonsaurus, as it's being dubbed, was about 10 meters long and weighed about 10 tons, making it one of the smallest sauropods. And now one for enterprising women. In Turkey, women have started their own children-friendly cafes where the coffee houses have traditionally been a bastion for men. Coffee houses have in the past and do still play an important part in the lifestyle of Turkey, but are usually frequented by men where they spend their time playing card games, backgammon or discussing politics. Gradually, however, the traditional coffee houses are starting to change and women are being accepted as customers at some of the cafes. One women-only cafe also offers a play area for children whose mothers cannot leave them elsewhere. While the mums spend time with their friends, the children can spend time safely playing or sleeping. The owner of the cafe said it was a way to attract new customers. Creating the playground opened up the cafe to women with young children who could not otherwise spend time there. It's a nice, safe place for the mothers to let their children play. There is special air conditioning for the smoke, so it doesn't affect the children as they play. Mothers say they are very satisfied with the arrangement. Instead of spending all their time at home alone, they can come to the cafe and meet with friends whilst giving their children the opportunity to play with other children. It's important to socialize children, so there's a great benefit for both the women and the children. A great idea, improving the lives of women and their children. Nobody really looks forward to going to the dentist, but if you can find a place where the price of a visit is minimized, you may be more inclined to make that annual appointment. 
The whine of dentist drills compete with the sound of the ringing of incoming telephone calls in a busy clinic in Hungary, but the main language spoken is German. As Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder's health care reforms and higher prices kick in, more Germans are making the trip to Hungary for dental treatment, saving thousands of euros and sustaining a dental mecca along the ex-communist state. Smart, high-tech clinics line the streets in many small towns near Hungary's border with Austria. German and Austrian number-plated cars are parked outside. Big signs everywhere point the way for these German and Austrian tooth tourists to a dentist where they combine cut-price treatments with shopping, touring and relaxing at Hungary's famous spas. Poverty and stagnation under decades of communism has turned to boom time in many of these small Hungarian towns. A medieval city that has been tastefully restored claims to be the dentist capital of the world, with one dentist per 80 inhabitants. While few of the locals can afford the prices charged to foreigners, more dental tourists are flocking to the area, wooed by internet advertising, travel agency offers and word of mouth. In the area, there are well over 1,000 dentists. The growth in Hungarian dental tourism has triggered a war of words with Austria, who fear losing business to cheap arrivals across the eastern frontiers, offering poorer quality of treatment. The accusation is refuted by the Hungarian dentists, who say they use the top American and European technology and materials to give quality treatment. Tens of thousands of Austrians have sought out Hungary's cheaper dentistry for years, commenting on rising prices in Germany that have prompted a big jump in interest among Germans for dental treatments in Hungary. The director of the Doctors' Association in Berlin says he isn't afraid of losing business to cheap arrivals across the eastern frontiers, because quality standards could over time level out the playing field. they believe that it is only happening in a limited area and could possibly go in both directions, where patients also go from east to west on the western border, where, for example, Dutch patients prefer to go to German hospitals. The tooth tourists seem satisfied with the service and quality they are receiving. Now to the environment where in the Malaysian state of Borneo, an orangutan rehabilitation centre is not a long-term solution to the survival of the species, but is sure contributing to it. In great ape terms, nine-month-old orangutan orphan CT could consider itself lucky. The furry orange ball's arrival at Malaysia's main orangutan centre on the island of Borneo, after a plantation owner tipped off staff, makes prospects for her future quite bright. Her kind and other great apes are not so lucky. This rehabilitation center has a strong record of rehabilitating its charges to the wild. CT requires close human attention, having lost her mother and will go through three months quarantine before joining a band of two to three year old apes at the center. Orangutans share most of their genes with humans and suffer many of the same diseases, such as tuberculosis and malaria. The main problem for these orangutan is the loss of their forest homes to oil palm plantations or illegal logging, though many do sit secure in well-preserved national parks. It is the ones outside these boundaries that worry Jeffrey Davison, Malaysia's Borneo World Wildlife Fund program director. They also need nurturing, much like human babies of the same age, making their care an intensive business. The rehabilitation process takes time. Upon reaching the age of five, CT will be put outside the nursery and introduced to the forest to see and feel the forest and hopefully in two to three years she will get used to the forest and just being wild. The plight of the orangutans and other great apes will be among issues discussed during a meeting of government officials from around the world who will gather in Kuala Lumpur to work out slowing global species loss. 
beefing up the world's protected areas will be one of the priority areas tackled by the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, whose broad aim is to achieve a significant drop in the rate of species extinctions by 2010. Sabah in Borneo hosts may be a quarter of the world's orangutans. Numbers are sketchy. Willows elsewhere in Borneo and Sumatra facing far graver risks from forest fires, illegal logging and poaching of their babies to supply an illicit pet trade. Let us hope that the combined will and effort of the United Nations, government and NGOs can slow down the destruction of the orangutans and other threatened species. Two-thirds of the 42 million people in the world suffering from HIV are in Africa. With the crisis expected to deepen, the issue of living with HIV AIDS was discussed at a conference in London. They heard from Princess Zulu from Zambia, who lives with HIV and feels it's the young that are the most at risk. The conference included the UK's International Development Minister on British efforts to help combat the disease. The princess says that it is generally the vulnerable children and the orphans who have been left out of this issue. They are the ones who are being marginalised. She wants the British and world governments to commit specifically to the cause. It is important that people are educated about the need to protect themselves so as to reduce the rate of HIV infection. A combination of education, prevention, care, treatment and the price of antiretrovirals coming down in price to make it affordable to poorer nations. It is also felt that African nations need to support to build on the measures in place and develop their own strategies to combat HIV AIDS. By working in unison with nations around the globe, Britain feels it can help countries in their battle with HIV AIDS. For all you model enthusiasts out there, this is a story for you. A collection of a thousand model cars, engines and aeroplanes is going under the auction hammer at Christie's Auction House in London. It's regarded as one of the great model collections in Europe and is expected to raise over £150,000. For around 15 years, a French collector amassed his huge collection. It's one of the world's most impressive displays of such models to come onto the market. There's everything for the model enthusiast. The sale at London's Christie's is generating huge interest. Collectors from around the globe have been giving the model car planes and engines the ones over. Amongst the standalone engines is this rare French Godfroy engine. Collectors are very passionate about their subject and this collection holds many rare and unusual pieces which they are keen to have. Despite the collection being one of the world's best, its breakup is not seen as something to mourn. It's seen as a great opportunity for older collectors as well as the young to get them started or to add to the already growing collection. So if you want to own a piece of model car and aviation history, you had better be quick. The sale is expected to raise in excess of £150,000. This is the London Art Fair. The UK's largest and longest established contemporary art sale has been launched. The Business Design Centre in Islington is hosting this year's London Art Fair. Inside, there are hundreds of exhibits of contemporary art for people to buy. Organisers say that with more money in the British economy and increasing interest in contemporary art, this is a growing market. These days, art isn't just for the rich. Here, prices start at around £100, and this year, show organisers have created a help section, including personal shoppers to guide potential buyers. Another addition to this year's show is the Art House. It's been especially designed to give visitors the opportunity to see how contemporary art can work inside homes on a relatively small budget. The London Art Fair expects about 35,000 visitors and having sold £12 million worth of art last time, they believe the contemporary art market will raise even further amounts this time round. 
Everyone has four walls in their home, a potential showcase for original artwork. Contemporary art can make your house a talking piece with its innovation and its uniqueness. Entering the world of fashion and the strict tailoring contrasting with ultra-feminine ruffles in Chanel's spring-summer collection. Guests sat in perspex Louis XIV style chairs in the entrance hall of the 18th century palace, transformed for the occasion with dove grey panelling and a subtle white box ceiling. The main theme in the collection was the play between graphic lines of narrow jackets cut to fit like a glove and skirts in tiered shapes that stop just below the knees. Pencil-thin dress coats exploded into ruffled hems, while a slim cocktail dress emerged from a bubble-like tulle jacket. Karl Lagerfeld, the designer of this collection, has explored this idea in the past, but this time he threw in soft tweed jackets and loose-fitting satin shirts with bell sleeves to soften the silhouette, romantic and modern at the same time. can afford the made-to-measure creations made by a team of seamstresses, employers and specialised craftspeople under a strict system of rules exclusive to Paris. With starting prices at $10,000 US and going up into the hundreds of thousands, the main purpose of the display is to generate a buzz for more affordable cosmetic and accessories ranges. Celebrities provide the best publicity of all. Chanel recently hired Nicole Kidman as the new face of its legendary number no. five perfume. The Oscar-winning actress reunited with Moulin Rouge director Baz Luhrmann to shoot an advertising campaign. This campaign will reportedly earn her millions. The collection was well received by the audience who appreciated the creative and feminine style that marked the model garments. The beauty and style of the range, marked by Karl Lagerfeld's eye for tailored shape and his ability to mix classic design with the whimsy of the feminine, marked this year's show. These occasions always delight. Next time you're traveling through India, be sure to check out the bullfights that attract huge crowds in India's southern Tamil Nadu state. Animal lovers may not like it, and the Spanish may scoff at it, but rural bullfighting in India's southern state has all the thrills of a Spanish standoff replete with blood and gore. A dozen bulls are pitted against hundreds of amateur matadors in a spectacle reminiscent of the Pamplona Fiesta. Thousands of people roar in expectation as the sturdy animals with needlepoint horns charge through the narrow alley. As the cornered beasts ran, the bullfighters, lacking the finery of the Spanish matadors, catch at them barehanded or pull their tails and throw rope loops on their horns. The fighters who tame the violent animals share the prize money. Without any rules or regulations, the sport is part of the agrarian state's country life and bulls are a status symbol. Family pride is often yoked to the number of bulls that till the fields and the bulls' appearance. The festival is essentially for youths because it's a celebration of youth, strength and stamina. Animal rights groups oppose the bullfights in which several hundred animals and people have been injured. On occasion even the tamers have been gored to death, but a bull that has not been tamed can fetch up to 50,000 rupees or about 11,000 US dollars. It is held in the peak tourist season, so if you can stand the potential visual risk, you should definitely not miss India's bullfighters. And finally, is your partner hopeless at dancing? Have they got two left feet? Then maybe you would be better off waltzing with your dog. A Dutch dog trainer in the Northern Netherlands is offering dancing lessons to people wanting a canine dancing partner. 
On this particular Saturday, 10 owners and their dogs braved the cold and gathered in the corner of a muddy sports field to attend their first doggy dancing class. With Shania Twain blaring from a music installation in the back of a car, dancing teacher Karen Appleman and her retriever started the lesson by demonstrating a series of basic dance steps. Karen, who works for a dog school, said that to loosen up the new students and to gauge their level of obedience, she will order the owners to make their pets leap through a hoop. In the beginning, people and their dogs will learn a series of a few basic movements, like the ones Karen and her dog performed on a two-minute long piece of music. After that, they move on to the intermediate course, where they will learn more tricks, like making their dog walk on its hinter legs or making it jump over their arms. After that, it's time to twist and turn. Rewarded for each move with a nibble of sausage, some of the four-footers were quick to learn the basic dance steps, like circling, weaving between the owner's legs, walking backwards and rolling over. Participants really enjoy it, finding it relaxing for both themselves and their canine friends. Doggy dancing is already a competitive sport in the United States and Britain and is becoming popular in the Netherlands as well. It costs 45 euros for eight lessons. Here the dogs are learning to walk between their owner's legs and are receiving rewards if they complete the task successfully. They are all a part of building up the dog's dancing repertoire and it appears that both owners and their pups are having a lot of fun. The dogs, when they are competing in dances, dance steps as diverse as the reel, jig, waltz or jive. The way the dogs and owners work together is breathtaking and very personal to the partnership between the pair. Dog lovers in growing numbers are training their pets and themselves in the sport called canine freestyle, a pastime in which the dog and its owner move in tandem through a set of choreographed steps to music of their choice. Organizations in the United States, Canada and Great Britain hold championships that are drawing ever larger groups of freestyle enthusiasts who swear that their canine Barishnikovs love the music, the teamwork and the chance to show off. And the prizes are tempting. At a recent disco doggy dance held by the World Canine Freestyle Organization in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the best in show collected $500, while first place went home with $100. Remember, it's never too late to teach an old dog new tricks, or dance steps for that matter. It's great exercise for all involved and builds on the pet owner relationship. Well, that's all the time we have. Don't forget to join us next time on Living.